This is a little tale called The Legend of the Cocksaber. I was in uh, Ritual Fix, and our guitar player was and uh, was John Madsen at the time, who was a fucking awesome dude, great guitar player. Um, uh, always made us look like a million bucks on stage and off, so this is by no means me burying him. That being said, um, we noticed John was a little bit on the homophobic side. Which, when I find something like that, you know, that... <laughs> you just run with it and oh, yeah. use it to no end. Yeah, I take that ball and I spike that shit in the end zone. And we were sitting, and I, I, I would just do little things just to fuck with him. And he was a built dude, so he, he totally could have handed me my ass, but he was nice enough not to. But, like, we'd be on stage and we'd be rocking, and I'd fucking swat him right in the ass, and he'd kind of give me the, that's not cool, dude, look. And... So one time, it, it came into my possession through, I want to say, Mark and Angela's... It was some... They got a gift that was like a gag gift, and it was this giant dildo with a big handle on it. So it looked like a big cock saber, as John called it. And instantly this thought bubble in my head, and I'm like, I knew we were playing in House of Bricks in Des Moines, and it was the it was a giant shared dressing room for people who've never been in the dressing room of House of Bricks, which I'm guessing is probably 99% of the people. Um, and I thought, in my awesomeness, that it would be really funny, since John was really homophobic, for me to put the giant cock saber in his changing bag, because he always had... He always changed because he came. He usually would come right from Luther, with his like Luther clothes, and then he would change into his metal clothes, and he'd have them in his bag. And so I thought, we'll just dump it and dump the the cock saber in his bag. Well, I'll be changing we'll, with downstairs with all the metal guys, and he'll open up this bag, and a big dick will fall out, and he'll have to explain. That's that's not my dick. I don't even know how that big cock saber got there. And I thought it would have been fucking brilliant. Um. So. The plan was he, they would, I want to say him and Mark went into Walmart and we were on, uh, on the way down. And so, uh, I, I grabbed the cock saber and I jammed it, I think it was in his lunch bag, is what I, where I threw it in. And I zipped it back up and I sat there and just, just, you know, giddy, just waiting for the payoff. But, uh, so we go down the road and unexpectedly... John opens up his bag, reaches right into his lunch bag, pulls out a sandwich. Doesn't sell it at all. And I'm sitting there like, ooh, he's mad. Like, he's, either he's like, you know, he, he sees it, and he's just like, oh, not good, oh. or he missed it somehow. Okay, maybe a little bit further down the road, John reaches back into the same lunch bag, gets this kind of puzzled look on his face, Pulls out the big cock saber, turns around with the cock saber, and like, hey! Like, I look like the kind of guy that would put a big and floppy dick in somebody's lunch. And, of course, I busted out land, I, you know, gave myself away. And his explanation for this is fucking priceless. Is, he reached into the bag, first time, and thought it was a banana. <laughs> and I'm thinking, dude, if that's what bananas look like at your house, mommy's got some splaining to do. <laughs> But yeah, so he didn't. He thought it was a banana, and so we never got the chance for the big, uh, the big unveil at the House of Bricks, which probably would have been like a life-changing experience, <laughs> and, you know, and probably the catalyst to turn him straight up gay. 
I'm guessing. Even though you're not gay, and I know that, John. <laughs> but it, you never know. That, that one time, you know, it made, a, made you think about things differently and be like, oh, maybe I do like big cock savers. But maybe you don't. So, But uh, that uh, pretty much is the story of the legend, if you will, of the cock saber.